Hello, I'm Leanne George, coordinator of the SPEC survey program at the Association of Research Libraries, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for this SPEC survey webcast. Today, we'll hear the results of the survey on campus-wide entrepreneurship, and these results have been published in SPEC Kit 355, which are freely available on the ARL Digital Publications website. Uh, before we begin, there are just a few announcements. Um, first, everyone but the presenters has been muted to cut down on background noise, so if you are part of a group today, feel free to speak among yourselves. And we do want you to join the conversation by typing questions in the chat box in the lower left corner of your screen. Uh, we'll answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. I'll read the questions aloud before the presenters answer them. and. Um, I wanted to also let you know that the webcast is being recorded and we will send all registrants the slides and a link to the recording um, within the next week. So now uh, let me introduce today's presenters from the University of Manitoba Libraries. Vera uh, Kean is Associate University Librarian, Academic Engagement Services. And Afra Bolesky is acting head, the Albert D. Cohen Management Library, and liaison to the Asper School of Business. Use this hashtag, ARLSpecKit355, you see in your lower right hand side of the screen, to continue the conversation with us on Twitter. And now, let me turn the presentation over to Vera. Thank you, Leanne. Welcome and thank you all for choosing to spend the next 45 minutes with us to talk about campus entrepreneurship. Afra and I are very excited to be able to share the results of the survey with you. To get started, we're going to, here's a quick outline of what we're going to cover today. We'll start with some background information on why we chose the topic and provide some context around entrepreneurship education at universities. We'll then delve into some of the selected results wrap up with some recommendations, and then have some time for questions. So why did we choose this topic? Our university, like many others in North America, is undergoing many changes in its approach to education. Experiential education is one area that our university has identified as a strategic focus in their current five-year plan. Experiential education can encompass many different pedagogical approaches including service level learning, co-op programs, undergraduate research, study abro abroad programs, and entrepreneurship. There had been a previous SPEC survey on library support for study abroad programs, but the other areas of experiential education had not been studied. Afra and I both had many years of experience working with business information and entrepreneurs and saw campus entrepreneurship as a growing trend on campuses that we felt needed to be studied from the library perspective. So what is campus-wide entrepreneurship and how big is it on university campuses? Entrepreneurship education can take many forms, all with the goal of creating the right environment and providing the necessary supports to faculty, staff, and students so that they may develop entrepreneurial knowledge and skills and or launch new companies or ventures, both inside and outside of the classroom. Activities can include formal courses and programs, as well as co-curricular or extracurricular activities, such as boot camps, business plans, competitions, or internships. These activities and programs may be dispersed around and even off campus, residing in multiple faculties, departments, or facilities, including incubators, accelerators, or smart parks. They may be centrally co coordinated by a separate office of campus entrepreneurship, or be a loosely coordinated set of offerings by various campus stakeholders. So how big is entrepreneurship on campus? Well, according to a report by the Kauffman Foundation, in 1975, colleges and universities in the U.S. offered 100 or so formal programs, such as majors, minors, and certificates, in entrepreneurship. By 2006, that number had grown to 500. In addition, the number of courses offered went from 250 in 1985 to more than 5,000 in 2008. According to the report, 
quote, well over 400,000 students a year take courses in the subject, and almost 9,000 faculty members teach it. And one third of, about, of the about 1,250 business incubators in the U.S. are based at universities. So as you can see, it's an important area of university education that is growing rapidly. However, one of the challenges around campus entrepreneurship is the history and stereotypes around the word entrepreneurship. There are a vast number of students on campus that either do not identify with the term or see it as a negative concept. These are generally students outside of the business school who see themselves as engineers, designers, artists, healthcare professionals, etc. Not necessarily as potential entrepreneurial professionals within their chosen field. This creates a challenge for universities. How do you balance the desire to expo expose and engage all students in entrepreneurship while at the same time recognizing the unique aspects of entrepreneurship found in disciplines outside of the business school? A lack of consensus on campus as to what entrepreneurship actually is, how it should be defined, taught, funded, and who exactly is an entrepreneur contributes to the confusion, confusing and usually de decentralized nature of the campus programs and activities. So given all of these challenges, how are libraries managing in their support of campus entrepreneurship? And that's what we wanted to find out. The purpose of this survey was to investigate how ARL member libraries are supporting campus entrepreneurship both inside and outside of the classroom. It asked about the types of library services and resources, funding models, staffing and administrative support, assessment, and the unique challenges of supporting these programs. These results are based on resp responses from 60 of the 124 ARL member libraries, or 48%. With regards to the response rate, I would like to note that the survey was specifically developed for ARL member libraries that serve universities. As such, there are a few ARL libraries that were not specifically targeted nor could complete the survey. Finally, the survey asked a lot of open-ended questions in order to capture the unique and varied nature of library support on campus, of campus entrepreneurship. So you will notice that the majority of the results are qualitative rather than quantitative. So if we look at campus-wide entrepreneurship as priorities of, for the, and the organization of it on campuses, of the 60 responding libraries, 83% indicated that their institution had, has identified expanding innovation and entrepreneurship opportunities and support throughout the university as a strategic priority. While some institutions mention entrepreneurship in a very general or high-level way, others identify specific goals and objectives complete with metrics such as increasing research commercial, commercialization, technology and transfer licensing, public and private partnerships, and growing the number of startups arising from their institutions. The benefits to expanding con campus entrepreneurship identified by institutions included working more closely with the business community, both locally and globally, in order to create opportunities for student uh, internships, alumni employment, develop collaborative spaces, and access equipment to help develop ideas. Campus entrepreneurship was also seen as a means of attracting students, faculty, and staff to their organization. As you can see, the coordination of entrepreneurship activities on campus is fairly even, evenly split amongst separate entrepreneurship centers in different faculties or schools at 29%, various stakeholders that loosely coordinate activities at 21%, and other structures at 24%. From the many comments received, it's clear that coordination of these programs is generally lacking on campuses. Leading faculties for programs include the business and engineering schools. Law schools were mentioned as providing programs in support in the areas of intellectual property and business law. Newer entrants into the entrepreneurship arena include information schools, architecture, music, and social sciences faculties, and of course libraries. Some programs are focused on specific types of entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial populations, such as social entrepreneurship and programs aimed at supporting women entrepreneurs and veterans and their families. Three quarters of responding libraries indicated that the library does not play a role in directing or coordinating campus entrepreneurship activities, 
However, in some cases, library staff are members of campus entrepreneurship programs, advisory boards, or steering committees. In terms of library support for entrepreneurship activities, the overwhelming majority of responding libraries, 82%, are providing support and or services to campus entrepreneurship activities on an ongoing basis. These services are mostly provided by the business librarian and involve support for the entrepreneurship course curriculum in the form of classroom instruction, instructional materials such as handouts, subject guides, and tutorials, and research consultations. While not specifically created for entrepreneurship activities, library makerspaces and their associated technologies were often mentioned as su providing support to campus entrepreneurship activities. In terms of library staffing to support entrepreneurship on campus, coordination and, of support and services is usually the responsibility of the business or engineering librarian, mirroring the patterns seen on campuses where these two faculties are leaders in developing entrepreneurship programs. Few libraries have created other positions specifically to support entrepreneurship activities. Instead, positions already supporting makerspaces, design studios, new media centers, digital scholarship, etc., support entrepreneurial activities as a natural extension of their duties. Due to the multidisciplinary nature of campus entrepreneurship and the goal of providing opportunities to all faculty and students, regardless of major, library support requires a team effort. The skills and ex expertise provided by all the subject liaison librarians, GIS librarians, digital scholarship, visual visualization, makerspaces, and media center specialists all are all required to fulfill the needs of faculty and students' entrepreneurship endeavors. Now I'll turn the presentation over to Afra, who will talk about library resources and services for campus entrepreneurship. Thank you, Vera. One second, trying to get to the next slide here. Okay. So for library resources purchased for entrepreneurship, this section itself focuses on questions 10 to 13 of the survey. And this encompasses the types of resources purchased, the source of funding, location, and users of resources, um, again, specific to entrepreneurial activities. If we break it down to types of resources, 55 respondents identified the top three resource types purchased to support entrepreneurship as books, 86%, specialized databases at 78%, and reference material at 71%. So this is shown on the graph that I just um, highlighted. It should be noted as well that a few institutions stated that although they had purchased or licensed these library resources, that they were not specifically acquired to support entrepreneurship activities, but to support more broadly academic use. When looking at the funding for these specific resources, 51 of the 53 responding libraries, or 96%, indicated that the main or central library's general budget was the primary source of funds for purchasing library resources specifically supporting entrepreneurship activities. A minority of respondents identified other sources of funds including the business library's budget, which was 38%, another branch or unit library budget at 30%, an academic department or unit budget at 28%, and finally an endowment fund at 25%. When looking at the location of resources, Resources are overwhelmingly located on the main campus library and online, and these are both tied at 89% or 47 of the responding institutions. The branch or unit library more likely to hold library resources for entrepreneurship activities was identified as either an engineering, science, or medical health sciences library. And surprisingly, the business library was ranked fourth at 36%. Of the small minority that, that listed other location, the most commonly mentioned site was a lab, such as an idea lab or the Rolls-Royce Rapid Prototype Lab. Now when moving on to users of resources, 
Not surprisingly, the top three categories of users here are students, faculty, and staff. Um, the general public, alumni, and members of the business community rounded out the top six users of library resources in that order. And the exact pattern continued when the resources were further divided into resource types, such as the books, journals, database, data, equipment, software, and so on. So now looking at online resource license restrictions. So this section focused on questions 14 to 16, which asked about a need to revise license agreements or to clarify the limitations of use due to expanded entrepreneurial activities, uh, imposed resource restrictions, and additional details on licensing agreements unique to entrepreneurship resources. So there were ma the majority here of the responding libraries, so this was 75%, did not need to revise their license agreements or clarify limitations of use for online resources due to expanded entrepreneurial initiatives. For the small minority that did revise their agreement, which was about 25%, they identified um, an online resource as either a business database or they named the specific product itself. Of the 35 respondents who had resource restrictions imposed, the most common restrictions were restricted access by IP range, so this was at 74%. That was followed by restricted to non-commercial uses at 66%. And then finally, the last being in library use only at 51%. There were a few comments that were noted um, in the question regarding um, the request that we asked for additional details um, that could prove helpful. So um, a few had mentioned that they were able to negotiate a walk-in clause for certain licenses. So we feel that this is a, a good recommendation for those who are considering revising their license agreement. So including a walk-in clause could allow for expanded access to um, unaffiliated institutional users. The final um, category here is library services for entrepreneurship. So this section draws attention to questions 81 to 21, 18 rather to 21, which covers the kinds of services libraries provide to support entrepreneurial activities. It also looks at the location and the users of these services, as well as a description of some of the key topics covered by library instruction. So the majority of responding institutions here identify the top three services provided as reference. So let me just use this highlighter here. So reference, so this included consultation appointments and office hours, and that was 96%. The next was library instruction, um, which was um, either a series of workshops covering topics such as copyright and intellectual property to classroom instruction. That again was at 96%, and that was followed by in-depth research. So if this could be conducting database searches and preparation for uh, a research consultation and so on. And this was at 72%. Some examples of notable library services that I'll just mention by name, and that's just due to our timing here, are uh, Michigan State's Selma D. and Stanley C. Hollander Make Central Make Makerspace, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison's Went Commons Library. Um, in this case, they had patent librarians who offered patent and trademark information and searching help to users. Um, of course, this is just two examples, and a more thorough list of library services can be found in the representative document section of our spec kit. Looking at uh, location, so the main campus library is the primary location that, that offers entrepreneurship services, and this is followed by services that are offered online. Of the responding institutions whose services are offered at another branch or unit library, which was 48% roughly, again, it was the engineering, medical health sciences, and science libraries that were most commonly reported. And again, similar to the library resources, the business library followed closely here in fourth place. For users, the core users of library resources are very similar and 
related to the library services. These are students, faculty, and staff. Um, alumni, the general public, and members of the business community were um, what I consider the second tier, if you want to say, of users of library services. And a few respondents here noted that um, really anyone could use the library services in their institution. So just wanted to highlight a few of the topics that were commonly covered through library instruction. So there were 47 responding institutions who did answer this question, and there was quite a variety of library instruction topics that were offered. So what I tried to do is categorize them into, into some of the main categories that were mentioned here. So the top five categories given were market research, so 64%, uh, so that's the, the, blue, um, the blue pie there. Um, industry research at 47%, and that is the green um, area or the green pie part there. Uh, company research at 43%. And this was followed by, I just categorized them together as patent, IP, and trademark searching at 28%, and uh, more of a general resource overview with some searching tips and strategies um, fall um, last at 23% in that, in that red area. Okay, so just finishing off here, I thought I would just um, mention a, a really interesting example of course instructional materials. So this is a business model canvas from Florida State University. And this is an interesting um, example. It was a template that's given to students really to give them a visual of how they could go about thinking and organizing the information that they find into a business model. So really good visual here. And again, there's more examples that you can find in our representative, representative documents. Now I'll turn it over to Vera, who will describe the findings on funding, partners, promotion, and assessment. Thanks, Safra. So uh, libraries have not received much new funding that was specifically earmarked to support campus entrepreneurship. Any funding received was usually designated for purchasing resources space development, or equipment, such as those for maker spaces. Funding came from alumni, corporate or private donors, endowments, and from the university. Um, in terms of partnerships with the library, the most notable partners for libraries included the technology transfer or commercialization offices, faculties and or departments, uh, incubators, accelerators, and established uh, campus entrepreneurship centers, as well as centers for teaching and learning. Partnership activities included uh, present presentations and instruction, collaborating on events, co-funding of business resources, cross-promotion, business plan competitions, and hackathons. In terms of promoting library resources um, and services for entrepreneurship, um, that typically mirrors that found of, of the traditional promotion efforts uh, employed by libraries for other resources and services. So it doesn't seem like we're doing much different trying to promote um, our, our support to entrepreneurship than we do with other um, services that we provide. And finally, looking at assessment, um, the ma majority of responding libraries have not really assessed the impact or success of the services they provide to support campus-wide entrepreneurship. When assessment is done, it typically takes the form of feedback or evaluations of instruction sessions or workshops, standard output statistics or surveys about space and services. Libraries that are planning to assess their support for campus entrepreneurship are considering how to measure the impact and value. So now we come to the challenges, um, which was sort of the, one of the last part of the, the survey. Um, and, and there, are, of course, were a lot of challenges. Um, they won't come as a surprise, as they include all of the typical challenges faced by libraries. So budgets and funding were at the top of the list, as well as staffing. Staffing challenges included not having enough staff to keep up with the demand for the ever-expanding number of entrepreneurship programs on campus as well as having staff that possess the needed competencies and specialized knowledge and skills to support the wide range of needs of entrepreneurs. The cost of market research was often cited as a real hindrance for libraries. 
In addition, there were issues around licensing of electronic resources for use by entrepreneurs as a line between coursework or non-for-profit non activities and commercial activities is very blurry. Libraries find it challenging to coordinate their support for campus entrepreneurship activities due to the lack of coordination, collaboration, or strategic direction of their institution. Finally, as we just saw, getting the message out to campus groups, faculty, and students about what the library can offer would be entrepreneurs is an ongoing challenge. So in, in conclusion, um, I, I think with this survey, we've only really begun to scratch the surface of the breadth and depth of entrepreneurship activities on university campuses. With the rapid underemployment of our university graduates, entrepreneurship may be an important avenue to meaningful employment. Today's generation views work differently than their parents. Millennials value work that provides them with an outlet for their creativity, flexibility, and the balance between their work and personal lives and more control over their future. Entrepreneurship is seen to be able to pro provide all of these important aspects. Entrepreneurship education is by nature varied. There is no standard template or curriculum. It is multidisciplinary, relying on the knowledge and expertise of a number of academics, mentors, employers, investors, and inventors both inside and outside the university. As a result, no single approach works for every campus. Programs must be dynamic and fluid, taking into account changes to a state or country's economy, as well as the needs and aspirations of students, faculty, and the community. So too must our library support, support for these programs be dynamic and fluid. So to close, we'll leave you with some recommendations to bring back to your libraries for further discussion and planning. So to start, understand your institution's entrepreneurship programs. Talk to anyone on campus who can help you better understand how entrepreneurship is playing out at your institution. Invest the time and energy to inventory your campus's entrepreneurship programs, identifying missions and visions for each, target audience, services offered, and sources of sponsorship and support. What's that's done? Assess your library's strengths. Um, what do you have to offer that specifically addresses the strategic goals of your institution around entrepreneurship? Identify opportunities to contribute. Find the gaps in entrepreneurship support that the library is uniquely positioned to fill. Uh, review license agreements, as we saw seen earlier. Um, and develop a strategy for library support. Based on all the information you've gathered, start developing the library strategy to support campus entrepreneurship. It was clear from the responses, libraries have neither the funds nor staff available to support all campus activities. The multidisciplinary nature of entrepreneurship means that all unit libraries and library staff need to play a role in supporting entrepreneurship on campus. Opportunity, opportunities exist in the areas of instruction in patent and trademark searching, market research and data industry searching, and sourcing local data. Don't forget about staff training. Encourage all subject librarians to learn about entrepreneurship in their disciplines and industries as entrepreneurs can be found in every discipline. Given that the results showed that libraries are still using traditional methods of promotion, yet also indicating that getting the word out about library support has been a challenge, it's time to look at new avenues for promotion. Sponsoring innovation contests and events is a good way of showcasing how the library can contribute to entrepreneurship endeavors. And finally, like with everything we do in libraries, assessment. Like any service uh, we, in, in libraries, we need to do a better job of assessing the value of our support, not just measuring output statistics. And I think that brings us to the end. Vera and Afra, um, and participants, we do welcome your questions. Uh, join the conversation by typing your question in the chat box in the lower left corner of your screen. And I'll read your questions aloud, and Vera and Afra will answer them for you. Uh, and to give our participants a, a moment to uh, type their questions, um, let me ask you, uh, what, what was the most surprising uh, finding from your, your survey results? Um, this is Afra. Um, 
I think for myself, I, I mentioned it a few times, was just the when we're looking at location of resources and services, I guess for myself being uh, formerly a business librarian and, and still a liaison, I'm seeing that the business library was ranked um, behind those kind of STEM related libraries was, was a surprise to, to me, I'd have to say. Um, and this is Vera. I, I think one of, one of the questions that we did ask, um, and, and we didn't mention in the presentation, um, was asking libraries about whether they had policies or service level, level agreements or, or MOUs with, um, you know, incubators or um, any of the entrepreneurship programs as to, you know, the services and, and, and that they can provide. Um, so we did ask that question, um, but we basically got a no for every for 100 percent of the <laughs> respondents. So um, I found that that was was uh, a little bit surprising that that nobody had developed um, anything. Although I suppose given you know how these programs have been growing, um, I, I think we're as libraries we're just really trying to to catch up to what's going on on campus. So perhaps those those policies and 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 MOUs will come in time. Um, I, we've got a, a couple questions here from Michael. He, he asked about um, how many of libraries have maker spaces, um, and we didn't specifically ask um, a question that would get a, a quantitative answer to that, but we do have a previous spec kit, uh, number 348, that's on rapid fabrication and maker space services that um, participants may be interested in looking at as well. And um, a follow-up question is, can you tell from the survey responses uh, how many campuses had technology transfer offices? Well, we, we didn't, um, again, like we said earlier, a lot of it is, is qualitative. Um, so uh, if you look through the entire results of the survey, you'll see that there are a lot of comments um, to go through. And, you know, I, I don't think there's a, a, an easy way to kind of count up how many actually had um, tech to technology transfer offices, although it, they, they were mentioned a lot in a lot of the comments um, from different institutions. Um, sometimes they're called commercialization offices. Um, sometimes they might have a different name on, on different campuses. The technology transfer and commercialization is, is usually the most common. Um, but, you know, it definitely featured very highly in, in a lot of the comments um, in terms of uh, partnerships with libraries um, and sort of groups that are, are a, a department or office that's involved with uh, campus entrepreneurship. I, just to follow up, I think one of the reasons for that, of course, is that um, office, often those offices are involved with uh, patenting um, and trademarks of, of um, research and, and inventions that are happening on campus. So, um, you know, they've, they've long been a source for that kind of um, support and also um, looking at market research as well. I, I worked with, um, not here, but when I worked at the Research Institute for the Federal Government, uh, I worked with people, a lot of those, they were called the same thing, but they were doing the same thing as technology transfer and commercialization. So um, for me as a library, they were a really great partnership. And in fact, they really um, appreciated, they were probably one of the groups that really appreciated the library's work and what they could do for them. So I think it could be a way of a uh, partnership with libraries to actually get at some of the inventors and entrepreneurs on campus is through the Technology Transfer and Commercialization Office. So please do join the conversation. Type your questions in the chat box at the lower left corner of your screen. We have time for a few more questions. Uh, you gave us some um, recommendations at the end of your presentation. Are there um, other areas of, of research that, um, or other questions you, you wish you could have asked now that you've got some uh, feedback from the survey respondents? Uh, okay. It's, it's Vera. Um, yeah, I think the... Um, 
you know, the, the survey, you know, we have to put a, a cap and a limit on the number of questions we could ask. Um, but I think after going through the results, uh, you know, we, we looked at some things and thought we, we would love, like to go in more depth into, into some particular um, areas. So one of them was, um, you know, we, we kind of think it would be interesting for someone to, you know, take a few of the case studies of some of the libraries that are ahead of others in supporting campus entrepreneurship um, and sort of highlight what it is that they're doing and how they're going about supporting it. Um, I think some of the examples that um, we had from this survey uh, that we felt stood out, uh, institutions or libraries that stood out in terms of what they were doing uh, were the University of Toronto, um, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, Syracuse had their Blackstone launch pad, and, um, and, and an interesting partnership was with, um, the, I think, the University of Kentucky. Yeah, and they had the they had a partnership with the Kentucky Small Business Development Center, um, in which they the the development center funded a student researcher position, and but that was, position was supervised um, and trained by the the business librarian of the school, and um, they did uh, market research uh, for small business or entrepreneurs that were coming into the the small business development center, um, and I think. One of the last things that would be really interesting to look at is, you know, what entrepreneurship looks like in, in different disciplines. So what does entrepreneurship mean in, in the music industry, um, in, in, the art, in the arts, or um, what does entre entrepreneurship look, in, look like in social sciences? Um, I think, you know, when we, we see there are so many uh, online businesses, so many, um, you know, there's a lot of personal branding that people are doing as well. So there just seems to be anything is, is game and open for, for being turned into a business. Um, so, you know, and it doesn't just mean it has to be some sort of uh, technology and, and, you know, you need a computer scientist to, to write something. So I, I think it's just wide open. Um, and I think from a, that's why we kind of said from a library perspective, you know, all, all the librarians need to be involved. And, um, you know, even though you're a, a social sciences librarian, you really should kind of sort of spend some time trying to figure out what does entrepreneurship look like um, in your areas? Uh, because I, you know, think that there is activity going on there. We just might not be tuning into it. Yeah. Seeing no more questions I, then. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I guess I just wanted to, um, you know, if, if we had a couple more minutes, I, I just thought we could ask the audience if anybody felt there was something that they would have liked to have seen in the survey or um, a question that we didn't ask that they were hoping was going to be there. So participants, if you have an answer to that, type it in the chat box and uh, we'll read that aloud. We'll give folks a, a little bit of time here to type in their response or their questions. And I want to remind the participants, if you haven't had a chance to read the spec kit yet, it is freely available uh, on the website. Um, you can download a partial or complete PDF. We're not seeing any comments, so I'm going to take that, that we did a complete survey and everybody's completely happy with it. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, here's one more um, comment that most institutions now have in place a means to record questions by type. It'd be interesting if any institution would have a category as supporting entrepreneurship. Right. 
Um, yeah. I'm guessing that, that's uh, refer reference questions. Yeah, yeah, and I guess that would fall under that assessment area um, as well. That, that's a good idea to be able to, to track that, and that would yeah. be across the board, not just the, the business or entrepreneurship, but um, all of that, would, I guess, would come into libraries asking for things that would could fall under that category of entrepreneurship. That would be a good way of mm -hmm. assessing. Um, Diana has a question on uh, how ARL might help support cross-institution sharing about library work in this arena uh, going forward. And I think that's a great question that I'd like to talk to my colleagues here about. Um, but certainly, um, sharing the results of this survey and connecting with um, each other is a great way to go about that. We do have uh, different discussion lists that, that we um, form when there's an interest. Uh, so if the community would find something like that of interest, let us know. Uh, yes, um, Diane has followed up with a community of practice, uh, and, and we are building several of those here with ARL support. So uh, feel free to contact me if, if you would be interested in that. Our time is uh, just about up now. And I would like to thank uh, Vera and Afra for their presentation today and thank all of the participants for joining us for this discussion of the results on the survey on campus-wide entrepreneurship. Uh, you will receive um, a link to the slides and recording next week. And I have a question about rebroadcasting that we will follow up with that um, participant offline. So thank you all again. And I look forward to seeing you at a future webcast.